Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. But if you're ready to level up your life and get results that truly matter in your health, business, mindset, and relationships, then this is the podcast for you. Welcome to Sheer Madness, where we have unscripted, real conversations with the world's top athletes, entrepreneurs, and coaches. Discover real world and tactical advice from the best in the business. Let's go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Sheer Madness. Today, we are doing another inside look with Rachel Sheer Nutrition, and I have one of my beautiful clients, Hannah, here today, who's going to share her incredible story of taking more of this functional medicine approach to her overall health and wellness. And I don't want to give too much details of exactly uh, why she came to me, because I think uh, it's best heard from her. So uh, thank you so much for coming on my show here today, Hannah. No, thanks for having me. I'm really excited. Yes. So kind of diving into all of it here today, um, you came to me because you had gone to quite a few doctors and you were experiencing a lot of gut issues with actually um, something called ulcerative colitis, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about, you know, what brought you in, what your symptoms were and kind of where you were at at that time in your life. Mm -hmm. So I would say when I first came to you, I was probably at my lowest point, even though I had already been seeing a doctor, a gastroenterologist, and I had already been diagnosed and on medication, but I, I was still at my lowest point and it's because I didn't have the best experience with my doctors. And so before I was diagnosed, I had already been having issues with dairy for years. So I, and it got progressively worse. And I always thought that was weird because it wasn't exactly an allergy. It just was a problem that got worse and worse. Mm -hmm. And then around the time before my diagnosis, I just, every time I ate food, my body just would reject it. I would have excruciating stomach pains. I'd have to lay down. I always felt tired. I mean, it's, I always say that I felt like a zombie, you know, I was 22 years old and I had zero energy when all of my other friends and peers, they were just full of energy, excited for, you know, to finish college and, you know, start their careers. And I was, I had zero energy or motivation or drive for any of that. Cause I just didn't feel well. And um, I come from a military family. And so when we have any, you know, issues, like when it comes to your physical health, we're very in the mindset, like, unless you're bleeding, like, you know, <laughs> you tough it out, you know. And so, and then on top of that, my symptoms, I always felt kind of embarrassed by them. It was hard to talk about. But again, right before I got diagnosed, I finally went to my parents and I was like, you know, something just isn't right. This isn't normal for me to be feeling so tired all the time. And this awful when I eat at 22 years old, I'm like, this isn't normal. Yeah. And so finally, my dad said he was the one that really encouraged me to go see someone. And so I did. I did a bunch of blood tests. I did stool tests, you name it. And um, they found that the inflammation uh, numbers, I believe it's the calprotectin was the key one that was just off the charts. It was crazy in my white blood cell count. And so I had to do the colonoscopy and they, that's when I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. And I remember waking up from the procedure and my doctor said, okay, you have ulcerative colitis, here's your prescription. That was it. Mm -hmm. And so I had never heard of ulcerative colitis. So I'm thinking, you know, okay, I take this medication maybe a month and it's gone, whatever that is. And then I get home and I Google and I'm like, wait a minute, this is a chronic lifelong disease of the gut. I'm, you know, it, so that just basically sums up the experience I had with my doctors. And yeah. then um, I discovered you when I, my family was on a road trip and, you know, we'll listen to podcasts and we were listening to Mike Ritland's 
mic drop and you were a guest on his podcast Mm -hmm. and hearing your story, I got emotional because I was like, I've never met anyone or heard anyone go through anything similar to me. And, you know, gut issues can be very isolating. And so I was almost a relief. I was releasing all this (laughs) stress and emotions because I was like, wow, I've Someone else has gone through the same thing. And then we Googled you. You happen to be in McKinney, which is where I'm from. And so that's when I finally had hope. And I, you know, I came to you and you totally changed my life. I never thought I would get to this point, quite honestly. So I want to give you like some like props though, like, because it's really, really hard when you're 22 years old and you're dealing with all of these health issues and you're like, Ooh what the heck is going on, you know, with my body, you know, I, I'm so fatigued, so tired at age 22 when we should be at like our peak of energy with everything. (laughs) And then, you know, you're dealing with all of these gut issues and then you're just constantly in pain, which was, you know, very similar to my story that you heard on Mike's podcast. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you go to the doctor, they run some very basic blood work. Um, you know, that's very, you know, basic of what insurance yeah. covers, which is good. It diagnoses anything severe going on. Um, and then they did the endoscopy, colonoscopy, came back. Okay, you had a lot of inflammation. Okay, here you have ulcerative colitis and here's this medication that you're going to take now for the rest of your life to just yeah. manage this. And I want to give you props because one thing that you did is you were your own advocate to mm-hmm. your own health. And many people in this situation, when they're slapped with a label, when they're slapped with a diagnosis, they completely stop looking, which is why I'm so against labeling people, whether it be, you know, you have, um, you know, it could be like a mental health related issue, brain health yeah. issue, IBS, you know, a lot of people are even labeled with you have IBS. And then we just totally focus on managing these symptoms and we stop looking for healing. We stop mm-hmm. looking for the root cause as to why this came about in the first place. But I think one thing that's so incredible about your journey and your story is you were like, what the heck is going on? I'm going to figure out and I'm going to, you know, get to the answers and get to the bottom of this. There's got to be more to what's exactly going on. I shouldn't have to be on this medication for the rest of my life. And, you know, that's kind of what's unfortunate about, you know, Western medicine. And I think by all means, I'm not bashing Western medicine. I think it's great in so many different aspects, but when it comes to Mm -hmm. managing chronic conditions, IBS, IBD, like ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, autoimmune conditions, um, it comes to any type of things like that, even mental health issues, honestly, we're terrible yeah. at it with Western medicine because it's just label prescribe typically. Yeah. And it, um, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> but no, something that you had said to me that really resonated with me and stuck with me, one of our appointments was that um, Western medicine tends to just slap a Band-Aid over the problem and, you know, experiencing, experiencing it firsthand, I was really felt that that was so true. And, you know, it's not always everyone's experience is like that, but it happens far too often. And so when you were explaining functional medicine on mic drop, that podcast, I was just baffled that I hadn't heard about that before. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's just really disappointing sometimes to most people people haven't heard about functional medicine. And I think, you know, people are starting to become a little bit more aware of what this approach is. And the reason most people haven't is because it doesn't follow the traditional insurance-based model, go to the doctor, see him for 15 minutes within that 15 minutes, they know exactly Mm -hmm. what's going on based off of the bare minimum testing that they've done, give you a label, give you medication. You know, um, it's kind of like when I was younger, I, I suffered with depression. I was like a moody teenager. I was 16 years old and I, I go mm-hmm. in there and immediately, you know, they just give me an antidepressant and they're like, you're depressed. And it's like, no shit. And like, <laughs> yes. But like, it, that's just like a band-aid to the issue. And then later on in life, you know, and then I'm struggling with coming off of this medication and uh-huh. you know, my body's become so dependent on it. And it's something that I wish I knew about when I was younger, when I was your age. Um, but what's so great is our body has this innate ability to heal when we know exactly what's going on, what the root causes of it, and we give it, you know, a lot of support, 
And one mm -hmm. thing like we really focus on with our practice is it's a functional medicine nutrition practice. So we do very hands-on with the diet side of everything. And there's a lot of functional medicine practices with doctors that even practice functional medicine, do more extensive testing, but it's still not always very hands-on with the diet side of everything. And that's what, you know, people who are dealing with um, gut issues, autoimmune issues actually gets um, gets the best results and helps with healing because it's mm -hmm. literally what we're putting into our body every single day. So you came to me, you heard me on Mike Ritland's podcast and you're like, had this hope for the first time of like, oh my mm -hmm. gosh, I'm going to figure out exactly what's going on and I'm going to get some healing. Um, what Were there any kind of like apprehensions of like going this route and kind of doing this type of testing or, you know, what was what was the big driver for you that made you just kind of like flip that switch and just go all in? Yeah. I mean, I think I was a little bit apprehensive in that while I, this was the first time I had hope <laughs> that maybe I'd find a solution, you know, you still in the back of your mind worry that like, well, what if this doesn't work? And then, but I just kind of said to myself, like, I need to try everything that I can mm -hmm. because you know, when I was Googling ulcerative colitis and, you know, I try to use fine resources. I went to YouTube because I know there's people who blog and stuff. And so I thought, you know, there has to be someone out there who talks about their experience with this. And there's a couple, there's not a lot. And, you know, a lot of them had even more severe experiences than me, you know, because I was embarrassed by my symptoms, I almost, you know, didn't go to my parents. And I'm glad I did because I found out early on enough, but some people aren't as lucky. They don't say anything and then they end up in the hospital. Um, you know, some people end up having to get their large intestines removed. And, you know, that was something that a doctor suggested to you. And so I just don't want to get to that point. I wanted to do everything that I possibly could to find a solution and to get better. And so when I found out about you, I mean, yeah, I finally had hope. I'm like, you know, I was already my medication. I forgot to say it was a lot. I, and I still take it and it's nine pills a day and uh, plus a suppository and it's a lot and there's side effects. I mean, my goal is to not be on medication at some point. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, to be on that kind of medication at 22, 23 now, mm -hmm. I mean, it's crazy to me that I, my doctor told me I'd be on this for the rest of my life. Yeah. You know? And I think, you know, it's, there's going to be a point where that you're able to come off of those medications. And I think there's a bit more healing that has to be done overall. Mm -hmm. Um, with the body. And, you know, I've worked with a lot of people with autoimmune conditions and I um, actually talked to a girl about it before the Zoom uh, <laughs> interview here today. And, you know, she was just kind of blown away with what the functional medicine approach is. And for those mm -hmm. who are listening, you know, when it comes to dealing with any kind of an autoimmune condition, you know, there is kind of a few different things that can trigger it. And oftentimes the gut is one of the biggest things that actually can trigger an autoimmune condition. Um, so if we get anything, um, that's called like a leaky gut. And I talked about that a little bit in Mike Ritland's podcast, but when our gut lining becomes damaged, whether this be from medications, from stress, from a poor diet, um, you know, maybe we're exposed to something, um, like a pathogen, uh, mm -hmm. a virus and our gut starts to get a little bit leaky, um, and leaky gut, basically we have these junctions that line the gut and if they become damaged, um, they, we start to get um, foods, toxins, bacteria that seep through that gut. And when that happens is we start to get this immune upregulation because these toxins and foods are going into the bloodstream. That's going to trigger an immune response and an inflammatory response. So part of addressing um, any kind of an autoimmune condition is looking at what's happening with the gut. We also want to pinpoint any kind of gut pathogens that are there. So you didn't have any gut pathogens like with the microbiome test, but mm -hmm. oftentimes we, we see people with fungal overgrowth. We see them with gut pathogens. We've even had people come back with parasites as well too. And that's all going to trigger your immune system to go into overdrive. Um, you know, the th third component of it um, besides the gut microbiome is going to be your immune system. And that was one thing that we saw with some of the testing we did on you 
is that mm-hmm. you were pretty low in things like vitamin D, your B vitamins were really, really low as well too. Mm-hmm. Um, so that caused a low level of um, a protection with your body from things like um, toxins and also just your overall immune response and can also lead to a little bit of that leaky gut. Um, you're pretty deficient in omega-3 fats. Um, you're like really, really deficient. I know. Actually. <laughs> she had guys, she had like the less than sign where it wasn't even like, <laughs> didn't even register on the test. So, and those omega-3 fats actually play a huge role in keeping that gut lining nice and strong and healthy. Um, so we did a lot at the beginning of working with Hannah, like micronutrient replacement, bringing up her vitamin D, her B vitamins, getting some of those fatty cuts of fish and and to her diet and adding in some omega-3s. So that's one big component. Um, another component that oftentimes people don't look at is um, hidden toxicities. And sometimes these can be environmental, like mold, herbicides, pesticides. So these toxicities can actually trigger an immune response quite a bit. So part of taking a functional medicine approach is what's going on with the gut, how severe is their leaky gut, um, what's going on with our immune system, deficiencies we have, and then are there any hidden toxicities because all of these are going to play a key role in our immune system and our inflammatory response. And the gut, you know, I talk about that all the time, you know, especially when we're dealing with Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, you know, that's all in the gut. So we need to work mm-hmm. on healing the gut. Um, so we did all this lab testing on you. Uh, we found out things you were deficient in, started with that nutrient replacement Um, I think we also found that you had this genetic defect and it's called MTHFR. Mm -hmm. And for those who don't know what that is, we call this the the mother effer gene because MTHFR. Um, But really what that uh, means is you don't methylate very well. And methylation is a form of detox. So talking about toxicities and things like that, uh, people who have this genetic defect actually can start to get more toxins in their body, get more of this immune response. And it's a pretty easy fix. We get you on some uh, pre-methylated B vitamins. We help support that methylation process. Um, Even psychiatric doctors will sometimes test this genetic test because um, we've found that people who have an MTHFR also um, can have higher rates of depression and anxiety Mm -hmm. as well too. So it helps a lot with mental health. Um, I think we also saw too through your testing where we looked at um, your hormones, like your stress hormones were like through the roof. (laughs) Yeah, her cortisol levels were really high. And then she had um, low DHEA in the sulfated form, which is also sometimes low due to inflammation. Um, so one thing we did this first month is along with you know the diet side of everything, uh, we worked on adding in those micronutrients. Um, we worked on getting her some methylated B vitamins to support that. And then we also worked on um, trying to address her adrenals. And part of addressing the adrenals is from the diet with what we do, balancing blood sugar out. Um, but it's also going to be, you know, sometimes supporting the adrenals like adaptogens, ashwagandha, vitamin C can be really, really helpful. So this is just an example of some of the things that we did with Hannah. And of course, like everything is completely different. Um, but Hannah, talk to me a little bit about like what changes you experienced within the first couple of months of doing the diet and kind of starting some of these protocols? Mm -hmm. Um, I experienced pretty drastic changes for the better. Um, So before just the type of, I guess, symptoms I was experiencing, even though I was still on medication, the biggest thing was I was still fatigued all of the time and everything just felt cloudy. I had a sense of cloudiness, like a haziness, just not really fully present. And, um, that's just the best way I can explain it. And then brain, you know, I, yeah, brain fog. And it's funny because before I changed my diet, I had always thought that I ate pretty healthy, but I realized I wasn't eating healthy for me. Um, just because you, Eat, you are eating healthier foods doesn't mean it's good for your body. For example, I before was on a vegan diet because I thought that's what I was supposed to do once I found out about ulcer colitis. But the problem with that is there's a lot of soy substitutes for when you're replacing meat. And so that's just an example of a food that's inflammatory and um, so causes inflammation in the gut still. So I was still 
eating things that were bad for my gut, even though I thought I was eating healthier. And so once I switched to my diet was very much focused on whole foods was, I would say the main emphasis you had for me Mm -hmm. and limiting, you know, grains and, um, just high protein and veggies and fruits. And once I, I mean, even just after a month, the brain fog went away. It was like the first thing immediately. And I was gaining my energy back. And, you know, I wasn't perfect in the beginning in terms of sticking to my diet. It definitely took a lot of self-discipline to just go from eating processed foods to only eating whole foods, you know, when you're in your early twenties, you know, you're going out all the time, you know, you want to be social with your friends. And so it takes a lot of self-discipline to say, okay, I'm not going to eat out or maybe I'll eat before and I'll still go hang out with my friends, enjoy my time. Because when you're eating out at restaurants, you don't know the oils that they're cooking the foods in, you know, stuff like that. And you may not have a lot of options because of that. And so those were the main changes, but I mean, it was so worth it because, you know, something that you say to me a lot is that you go from having to the mindset of, oh, I should eat healthier to now you have to eat healthier because your body depends on it. Your health depends on it. Yeah. I think when we make this shift to like realizing that every cell in our body is made up from the food we eat, it's like, Mm -hmm. oh my gosh, why didn't I think of it like this before? You know, and people are like, I don't feel good. I feel unhealthy. And we like, don't even ever look at like the things that we're putting into our body Mm -hmm. and like the things that we did, even with Hannah, like, I'm not saying grains are bad for everybody, you know, and like, like even dairy is bad for everybody. Although like the rate of um, sensitivities with dairy is pretty high. But Mm -hmm. especially when we're dealing with an inflammatory condition, you know, we want to cut out a inflammatory foods and then we want to cut out foods that cause a lot of an immune response that could be possible sensitivities as well too. We did some food sensitivity tests on her, which kind of further Mm -hmm. helped to bring down some of that inflammation with pinpointing a lot of those triggers. And the nutrition is really what made, you know, a huge difference. And I just can't reiterate that, um, so, so much because of how important that is. And so many of us just don't even look at nutrition. And it's like the main way we're going to get healing. We can take all the supplements in the world. We yeah. can take all the medications in the world. But if we're not addressing the things we're the food we're putting in our body that is making up all of our cells, then, you know, we honestly, we can't heal. I'll say like we're managing, we're not healing by any mm-hmm. means. Um, you know, and one thing I always tell my clients like you, it's like, this isn't an easy journey. And I think, you know, when we begin this journey, everyone thinks, you know, it's just going to be a quick fix. It's going to be super easy. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was hard, right? It wasn't it's very hard. And, you know, I, I'd say before I was always someone who had the like treat yourself mentality, especially with food, but also, and that's something thing I wanted to touch on was that changing my diet not only helped me with issues with my gut, but just overall, I was happier. And that's something that I didn't realize that what you eat and your gut health is very strongly related to like your mental health. And, Mm -hmm. and, you know, I, after a month, I just felt happier. I felt more like myself and I hadn't felt like that in probably years because I, this has been a very long journey for me from going from, oh, dairy's bothering me to I can't eat it because I will get sick to everything is making me sick. So, I mean, it took a long time to get to where I am now, and I'm still not 100% at my goal of not being on medication, but I feel like I'm getting there and food plays such an important role in that. And I really didn't realize that till I came to you and you know, I finally became educated on all of this. Yeah. And I also think, you know, what was a big shift for you too, is you, you kind of shifted from being more in like a victim kind of mindset to being mm-hmm. empowered and to be, you know, being confident with this journey of like, I need, I'm the one 
who's going to heal myself in realizing that there's not going to be a doctor. There's no one's going to do the work for me. You know, yeah. even, even me, I can't even like do the work for you. Like at the no. end of the day, <laughs> you doing the work, it's you prepping the food, it's you making the good choices and it's freaking mm-hmm. hard. You know, it's not an easy thing. Food is a, probably one of the number one um, thing we abuse here in the world. We abuse food. It's not drugs. It's not alcohol. It's literally food Mm -hmm. um, with what we're doing to our body. But I think food is also a a very powerful uh, form of self-love. It's literally saying like, okay, I'm going to do what's good for my body. It's like kind of like working out, like self-love isn't saying like, oh, you know, just just sit there on the couch, don't do anything and saying, no, I'm going to do, it's kind of like tough love. Like you do with your kids. It's saying, I'm going to do yeah. <laughs> good for you. No, you don't want to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh-huh. And I think there's a confidence that comes with that. It's like, you know, doing the things you say you're going to do. And I've talked about that plenty on my podcast. And I think I just mm-hmm. see this, you know, empowerment, like radiating from you now and this confidence just because of overall the mindset shift and being like you you did this yourself. I was your advocate. I guided you along Mm -hmm. the journey, kind of gave you some answers of things to really focus on. But at the end of the day, like you are the one doing the work and it's a tough journey and it's a never ending journey and it's not a quick fix. But I think, you know, um, that's been such a huge shift in what I've seen with you and what I see with any of my clients who are so successful on this journey. Mm -hmm. Um, did you notice like a, a big mindset shift for you when you started with going this route overall, just like the way that you thought about health and nutrition and all of that? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, you mentioned the victim like mentality or mindset and that's definitely, I spent, so I got diagnosed January, I think 13th of 2020 and Um, I didn't see you until probably six months later, but Mm -hmm. I went from feeling sorry for myself. You know, I was crying all the time. I was saying, why me? You know, (laughs) it seems a little ridiculous, but I don't think Mm -hmm. people truly understand the low point you get to with something like ulcerative colitis or a gut issue until you actually experience it for yourself. And it's very isolating. You know, I, wasn't seeing friends all the time. I wasn't doing the things that I normally did. I just, part of it was, I was just so tired all the time, but, you know, I was isolating myself. And then, you know, I started to realize that the only way I'm going to have a change is if I take responsibility and I be an advocate for myself and, you know, don't take the prescription bandaid for an, an answer, you know, and I just, Deep down, I realized that, you know, I'm going to have to, I'm the one that's going to have to make a change in order to see Mm -hmm. a change. You know, it's only going to be me that's going (laughs) to create the change. And you used a word I always say, I'm like, you're going to have to be your own advocate for Mm -hmm. yourself. And that's, that's the shift that has to take place, that no one's going to do the work for you. You're going to be the one that has to put in the work if you really want to get this healing um what did what would you say like helped you stay accountable to yourself along this journey because uh, as we said it's it's a tough tough journey you're making Mm -hmm. a lot of lifestyle dietary changes um throughout this entire process was there anything that you found that was like helpful for just like staying accountable along this journey um I would say that I definitely especially in the beginning had a routine And that kind of helped me, like, I would wake up and I'd say, okay, I'm going to take some ashwagandha, you know, help (laughs) lower those, um, my stress levels. And I, so I made that part of my routine. I'm like, okay, that's the first thing I'm going to do. And then, um, the beginning, you know, part of my meal plan that you had for me was to make a protein shake because my protein was very low And so I'd say, okay, now I'm going to make my protein shake. And then, you know, just having the step-by-step kind of like a baby step mindset, like this is the first thing I'm going to do, then I'm going to focus on the next thing. And so instead of being overwhelmed by the big picture of everything and all the changes I had to make, I just kind of took it as, okay, I'm going to do one thing at a time. 
and I'm not going to be perfect at first. I kind of understood that, but I realized, you know, it's a journey. And like you said, there is no quick fix. And so I just was constantly reminding myself, like, you're going to get to your goals, you know, you're going to accomplish them, but it's just one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Would you say you fell in love with the journey? You know, because I think sometimes where I see clients who do struggle is they were so fixed on that end goal, you know, whether it be Mm -hmm. like a weak goal, whether that be, you know, I'm in perfect health with everything. And I know you're not right now, like obviously currently at like your end end goal necessarily, Mm -hmm. But would, what would you say, like, you fell in love with, like, the things you were doing daily and, like, what that did for you versus, like, just necessarily getting to that end goal and just solely focusing on that? Yeah, I mean, I definitely fell in love with the journey. And the thing is, with progress, you're kind of achieving mini goals, mm-hmm. like, one at a time. And so I was slowly feeling better and I was kind of addicted to feeling better. And it's, you know, people experience that with like when they start working out, you know, they slowly realize, you know, it's getting to the gym is the hardest part. And then once you leave the gym, you're like, wow, I'm so happy. I'm so glad I made it there. Like, I feel good. I feel great. I was kind of addicted to slowly getting that feeling back Mm -hmm. and feeling more like myself again that was the addicting part for me. Yeah. You fell in love with like the, the mini wins, the daily action mm-hmm. you were doing versus like, I have to get here. And that's something that I also see with people who are really successful on the journey. You know, it's like, we fall in love with who we're becoming. We fall in love with these little wins. We're not focused on, you know, three months from now, six months from now, yeah. we're also coming from this place of empowerment. And sometimes if we're coming from a place of over restriction of punishment. Like sometimes I'll see with my women who are trying to lose weight. Like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm punishing myself to go to the gym. I'm, I, you know, I'm um, trying to, you know, I'm forcing myself to try to get this weight off versus being like this workout is going to, um, you know, give me that energy. It's going to make me feel good. Like when I leave the gym and just like for my mental health and everything. And I love the way what, what sweating does for my body. Like I feel incredible. And I love that. But if I was solely focused on like, you know, I have to get to a certain weight, you know, that, that would be very defeating if every single day, you know, I didn't love those actions of everything that I was doing and I didn't see benefit to it um, each and every single day versus just solely being like, when am I going to get there? When am I going to get mm-hmm. there? Overall. And I think a lot of it too was I kept looking back almost and saying, you know, I would remember the lowest point that I ever felt in I would look at where I am now and I would say, wow, I've come a long way, even though I just started Mm -hmm. feeling better, I've come a long way. And so I think people should try and focus more on that, like how far they've come rather than how much Mm -hmm. left they have to go. I love that so much. So what would you say this means for you moving forward? So obviously the journey, you know, we talk about it's never ending. You know, the work is never completely done. It's not like you go to the gym one time or even for like a month and then you're like, I did it. I reached my goal. Uh I'm done. Don't have to do it anymore. Like you're forever going to have to be working on your diet and eating healthy and making Uh these choices. And it gets easier and easier over time. But what would you say, you know, this has allowed you to do with the rest of your life? Because sometimes, right, we're so focused on just this healing and the food and all that kind of stuff where we can't even think about like school and work and relationships and dating and, you know, you're 22 and you're young. So it's like, these are things we want to think about. So, you Mm -hmm. know, what does this mean for you now moving forward with the rest of your life? I mean, this whole experience has been life-changing. Like, I can't emphasize that enough. And the things you've taught me, I will carry with me, you know, the rest of my life. And, you know, having ulcerative colitis, it is a lifelong thing. You know, people can go into remission, but, you know, a lot of the time people can go back to having, they'll have flare-ups even though they were just in remission and, you know, being completely healed forever is not guaranteed. And so this is something I will have to keep doing for the rest of my life, you know, keep fueling my body with proper food. And this is something that I've also taught my family. Like my family has started eating healthier and eating things that are better for the gut because of 
what I've been going through. And, you know, you mentioned like relationships and dating, like, yeah, I'm, so I'm 23 now. And, you know, when I was going through all this, I was single, you know, I wasn't even thinking about that. You know, my main priority was, you know, trying to feel better. And, you know, now that I am more, I'm more confident, I feel more myself than ever. And, you know, it really does influence every facet of your life. It, you know, when you feel good, you do better in your career, you know, you can give more in your relationships, you know, everything is just Mm -hmm. a lot better. I can't emphasize that enough. You're going to make me cry. Yeah, I love that. And what I'm hearing from what you just said is it's a daily choice. Mm -hmm. It's a daily choice of I'm going to do this for me. I'm going to show up for myself. I'm going to choose me every single day, not just like a couple days, not just for this, for this month, not just because I'm doing a 12 week detox, you know, weight loss journey, you know, Mm -hmm. this is a daily choice of how I want to show up for myself. Yeah. That's such an an incredible shift, which is Mm -hmm. like the way we think about this. Yeah. What advice would you give somebody who's, you know, just thinking about maybe starting a health journey, maybe it's just simple. Maybe it's like, Hey, they just want to lose weight. They want to feel better. Or Mm -hmm. let's say it's somebody who's dealing with something like Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, an autoimmune condition. Um, you know, and they're thinking about, you know, diving maybe into the functional medicine side or working with a coach and getting help. Is there anything that you found to be helpful or any advice you'd want to give to that person? Um, I would say any advice I would give, especially to someone going through an autoimmune condition, maybe they were like me, you know, freshly diagnosed, you know, not well educated on the condition or what to do. They feel hopeless. Um, I would want them to know that they're not alone. That was a big thing for me is I really felt like no one understood me. Know that. So I want people to know like, you're not alone in this and, you know, have hope and reward yourself by going to the gym, see things like that, eating healthier as rewards, you're rewarding your body and focus on the positives is a big thing. I was definitely in the beginning only focusing on the negatives and, you know, that's where the victim mindset comes into play. Once you start focusing on the positives, you will again, become more empowered and you feel like you can find a way to find a solution and get help. Mm -hmm. I love that so much. So you guys, if you're someone who is healing or struggling um, with any kind of an autoimmune condition, chronic health related issue, even if it's just IBS, gut issues, you know, even if it's just like, I can't lose weight, you know, Um, you know, there's people out there who really do want to help, who are your advocate. You're definitely not alone. Like Hannah Mm -hmm. said, um, you know, and it's, it's a daily journey. It's something that we choose every single day and we can always choose to be a victim. Think why me, why me? And just kind of blame everybody else and, you know, feel sorry for ourselves. Or we can say, you know what, I'm going to be my own advocate. I'm going to do what it takes to fix this. And one thing I always talk about is accountability. You know, accountability is not saying who did it. It's not pointing the finger and blaming. It's saying, I'm going to do what it takes to fix it, to heal it. Mm-hmm. No matter who caused it, what caused it, I'm going to be the person who's responsible for it. And that's what, you know, this whole healing journey is about. So I just want to thank you so much, Hannah, for coming on uh, my podcast here today, sharing your story. Um, you're such such a beautiful soul. And I know like you. this, you know, this entire journey, it's flowing into everybody else in your life, your family, Mm -hmm. your friends, you know, and you're going to be able to also impact so many people's lives. And, you know, I'm so excited to see, you know, where this journey takes you. And I have no doubt that you're going to continue um, on this healing journey and do so many incredible things with your life with just the person that you are. So thank you so much for coming on my show today. Thank you for having me. All right, guys, if you want to learn a little bit more about what we do here at Rachel Shear Nutrition, um, you can actually do a free 15-minute consultation call with me or one of my dietitians. 
Um, we do this whole application process because we want to make sure we're a good fit for each other um, with the testing that we do, you know, mindset wise and um, make sure we can help you with what it is that's going on. So if you want to learn a little bit more, check us out at rachelshear.com. You can book a free 15 minute call that way. Um, follow us on social media at Rachel Shear Nutrition. And thank you guys all for tuning in. This has been Sheer Madness.